Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today I'm going to be helping you guys get better at the laning stage. Now this video is obviously going to help most for the off lane, but of course a lot of the concepts I'm about to show you guys are going to be able to be applied to the mid lane, to the safe lane, and definitely to support players as well in a lot of regard. So without further ado, let's hop right into it. This is a game where I played Venge off lane, absolutely dumpstered this faceless void, and let's get into it. Alright, and before we get into the main part of the video, I do want to let you guys know that I'm not only posting videos here on YouTube, I also frequently post videos on the website. If you don't know what I'm talking about, almost every single day I'm posting a new video to the GameLeaf website, where we're going to teach you guys in depth about how to get to the next level. So if you want to become absolutely broken, click the link down below and sign up. So I will admit a couple of things. Uh, I think Grimstroke is a pretty bad laner. Uh, the reason why is early on this hero's base stats are pretty bad. Three armor is mediocre, its damage is not so good, and its movement speed is not the best. Also, Stroke of Fate isn't an attack speed slow or a stun, and as a result, it's not really that good for trading, right? So, Grim is not the best laner. Faceless Void, I actually got last pick this game, and I picked Venge, because I know Venge can dominate Void in lane, basically just through abusing Bracers. One of the most interesting things about Venge is that because you're universal, you can have 68 base damage with circlet, circlet, branch for branch. But okay, now let's get into the main thing that you guys are here for, which is winning the laning stage. So, okay, a couple main things that I'm always focused on in every single lane. So number one is CS. CS is the most important thing in the lane for me in every single lane. I have gained a lot of MMR throughout the years by putting a very, very heavy emphasis on CS. I think I'm one of the best last hitters in the game, not when it comes to the mid lane. My mid CS is like terrible. But when it comes to off lane, like my aggro, my my awareness of like the supports, like so on and so on is very good. And as a result, I will win or draw even, even in losing lanes, just through CS. The second thing is having enough regen. And the third thing is buying items that enable the lane. So in this lane, I'm not gonna rush a wand. Why? Well, Void doesn't really spam spells. It's not the worst item against Void if he takes time dilation. And it's not terrible against Grim, but against Faceless Void, Faceless Void, one of the main flaws of Void as a carry is, I'm gonna go ahead just a little bit here. One of the main flaws is as the lane progresses, he doesn't really get that much damage. You can see at minute four here at level three is 77, which isn't obviously terrible, but I can have 88 here, right? So I can beat him by 11 damage. And when I hit level four, I get an extra eight-ish damage. So I can completely just beat him on CS and use that damage advantage to also bully him a bit. Right. So this is very important to understand. And these are the main three things. Optimizing my my items, making sure I have enough regen, which is an item, but that's like the most important item. And then, of course, CS. Right. These are the main things I'm focused on uh, in, in every single lane. Then there's just a ton of small things, which I'll uh, now point out to you guys. Like there's a ton of small things you can optimize. So at level one, I take Wave of Terror. Uh, this ability is insane. It's armor reduction. It's attack damage reduction it's damage. Just an, it's only 40 mana, like this ability is nuts. So right away, I'm gonna pull aggro on the first creep. Main idea here is just make it hard for Void to deny it. Ends up working out, he gets late to the creep. So I'm able to hit it first at the perfect time and get the CS. From there, maybe I could have waved the, the Void just immediately to make the Marana autos do more, but then he would probably use his Q. So the, the next thing I have to keep in mind is what are the supports doing? When the supports are trading on the left, I'm often going to try to help my support trade if I have a spell that can do that. So if my Marana was trading with Grim here, I would probably click Wave of Terror on the Grim once I've seen that the Grim has committed to fighting my Marana. The reason why is once the Marana goes up in the trade, the Grim will have to run away and my Marana will win two or three auto attacks. And that will get the lane off on a good start. However, this game is kind of the exception, right? The, the situation I just brought to you guys is the most common situation, but this is, game is more of the exception where my support decides to play on the opposite side and hit the void. And it's very important when you see this, you play away from the enemy support. Notice I pull aggro to the right and I completely avoid training with the Grim. I have no interest. He can't hit me. What is he gonna do? He can't hit me, right? He can't run through the wave and hit me. Then I'll hit him, right? So I just basically completely ignore him. I meant to secure the CS. I just messed up the numbers. Uh, you should wave and then hit as Venge because it lowers the armor. So I kind of did this backwards, uh, but I did get the range creep in the end of the day and we get three CS. From there, if you're a ranged hero, you should go for these denies. Even if you're a melee hero and the lane is easy, you should go for the denies. If you're a melee hero and the lane is a bit harder, of course not, right? Play back, chill, get your CS. This is a lane where I can play very aggressive, right? In some lanes, you can't really go for a lot of denies. You can't even go for a lot of pressure. You just have to play for a lot of creep aggro in these lanes. This is just a lane where I can do it all, right? I can do it ex just whatever I want because Grim's not that good. Void doesn't put any pressure. So I'm contesting all these creeps. 
And yeah, I'm just CSing well here. I get this range deny as well. Like, and this is just, it's going to matter a lot, guys. And you're going to see it matters a lot in a moment here. A few denies changes the lane. If you get two denies and your enemy gets zero, it changes the course of the lane. If you're good, let me show you why that happens. It's because you're going to hit level two first, right? So as the lane pushes in here, I'm CSing, I'm CSing, I'm CSing. And I look down and I remember this game in particular, I was really good about it. I was like, okay, I'm about to hit level two. I'm like, when am I going to hit level two? It's not this range. It's the next creep. Uh, and so I knew once I get this creep, do I ping? I wonder if I ping. I probably ping. I usually ping if I want to go for a kill. So yeah, I, I'm probably thinking about going on the Grim, but right when the Grim steps up, I know this creep's going to give me two and I know they won't hit level two. Uh, actually, did this creep not give them two? Oh, he didn't CS it. Would they have hit two off that creep? Because they've killed Mark. Oh, they might have. Oh, that's really bad. <laughs> oh, that's really, really bad. So, and you could call this, I mean, you could call it a choke. It's funny, I didn't know this happened in the game, right? You could call it a choke. It's it's one of those hard things where like, maybe if this guy is really an optimal player, like he's like from the future or he's just really good. He knows that I got to get the CS ASAP to make sure we hit level two, right? And the reason why this happened is because they they killed off a creep faster than us, right? Uh, we currently have four creeps, they have three. So my denies did matter, but it's kind of a good play from the Grim here. Oh, this is something pros do intentionally too. I, I forgot, I, I occasionally do it where on the third wave, this is the third wave, if you push it in faster, you hit two faster, even if you got denied. So there's a lot of small things, as you can see guys, I don't want to overwhelm you. <laughs> I know you guys are the greatest players of all time and you can understand everything I'm saying with perfection immediately, but hopefully you can see the main gist is like get the nice and then when you're about to hit level two, like use it. Even if let's say they hit level two at the same time, sometimes you'll just catch them off guard, right? And you'll be able to blow one of them up and they won't be able to get their spells off. And so like right here, I knew I was going to hit two, go on the Grim, Marana follows it up and we get the kill. Right. Boom. Hit level two, we explode, kill the Venge. Um, sorry, the grip. And we only had a small window to, to go on him there, right? But I was able to find that window, even against the player that's, you know, pretty high in Mar. He's ranked 80. I'm able to find this window because of the fact that, well, we're fast. We were quick about it, right? Very, very quick about it. So, okay. From there, we hit level two. At this point, I'm kind of thinking like, get good CS. I use the wave, got double CS there. So just kind of clean CSing. I get another deny. This Grim is a psycho running up like this. I, I know I'm not going to commit on him. I'm just stunning him because he overstepped and we can hit him. Like I'll only throw out my stun if it's either going to lead to a kill or lead to like three or four autos. And I'll probably never stun Void unless his Q is on cooldown. These are my my things in the lane. So here, I'm probably playing a bit too far back. I think at this point I'm thinking like, okay, they're pushing the wave. Uh, I can just pull the lane back at this point. And like once we get the lane back, I got my double bracer, right? Because double bracers is so good against Void because you can just, you can try to deny him. I think he makes the right choice of buying the, the Band of Elven skin. Helps out his damage. But until he gets that off Courier, you know, he's he's going to have a bit of a hard time CSing against me. Uh, and it's going to show. And you have to be good to take advantage of like a 10 damage difference or a 6 or 7 damage advantage. But like if you if you do, like I know here, I mean, I don't know if this is in range for him. I think it's, yeah, like he'd have to high roll, I think, right? Because this is how you know I'm the GOAT. You know, Speed Dota is literally the best player in the world. Because like this is at 75. I'm pretty sure I knew it was just out of range, but it's not for me. I have 76 to 82 damage range. So it's like perfectly in range, right? So I hit it. You know, I, maybe I'm the worst player in the world. Maybe I'm literally the worst player in the world. I could have denied it. Okay, he didn't get that creep though. I, I'm probably the worst player in the world, guys. I don't really know. I'm either the best or the worst. It's one or the other. But, oh yeah, this was funny. <laughs> this is funny. He just got caught off guard. He's like, this guy's not going to stun me. You do so much damage. Like, I got literally hit so hard with the wave of terror. I'm hitting for like 70. <laughs> he just died. I mean, honestly, I'm, I was almost caught off guard. Like, I, I realized really late that he could die. Like, my autos were hitting so hard. I'm like, oh, he can die. Because <laughs> he had time dilation and I think a stick lotus. <laughs> but I stunned him. I stunned him at the right time. That was a pretty goat stun. Maybe I am the best. Wow, it's crazy, guys. And then from there, it kind of all snowballed. Unfortunately, I didn't get any of these kills. We ended up finding the Grim too. Level two Venge stun is a big spike because it goes from 90 damage to 180. So it doubles the damage. Um, so you can really start to get kills, right, at level three. Um, but at this point with the wand, we got 88 damage. As I said, when I hit level four, I can take a point of my E and that gives me uh, eight damage as well. 
right? And so at this point, I'm hitting for literally 100. And I do want to point out my major mistake of this lane. So Dota heroes have very different interactions. Like every hero in Dota can play the lane and play the mid game much differently, right? So the major flaw for Venge at this point, because this is still the laning stage, right? And like how I play it at this point is just as important as the first five minutes, right? So I'm going for denies, contesting the void, but I end up dying here to a good bat rotation very shortly. Uh, I think it's after he he goes back to base and I end up going down. So what am I supposed to do, right? Because I end up dying to the bat. How do you avoid this? Well, it's very simple. When you're playing Venge, you can't play far up because you can't you can't really defend yourself against certain heroes. Not to be fair, this bat was having a really good game. You can see his top net worth support. His game is pretty good. Look at the void's net worth. Oh. He had like no CS 21. Eh, it's, it's okay. I'm 30 and 11 though. At this point, I end up dying. It's right here. I die the bat. And what should I do? Okay. In order to avoid these scenarios, you have to get the lane back, right? And there's two ways to do that. You aggro deny. There's three. You pray the opponent shoves the wave, which in low MR, they often do. Or you pull or you aggro deny. Now, what I should have done here is instead of like getting into this limbo here, right? Because the next wave is going to meet up. Instead of getting into this, oh, oh no, I just auto attack. Oh, that's really cringe. Did I auto attack this creep too? No, I didn't. So you can see, I kind of, I like half did it. I hit one creep once, but then, I mean, this is fine. I guess I can't blame myself too much. The main thing I could have done here in hindsight is I could have pulled, right? Because I really, really want the wave directly under my tower because I can die to X, I can die to coil, I can die to bat, like bat is just such a good hero in the current meta at high MMR. And it's like a hard counter to heroes like Venge that have bad disengage, right? Because bat just does so much damage if, if he stays on top of you, right? I can stun him, which I do, but it's just not enough. Um, and so, yeah, I should have pulled this wave, right? Because I have to know, okay, they have, they have killers and they have in particular, I mean, they have Grim too, right? Grim is very scary at this point in the game. Level two ink swell is just, you know, this ability is insane damage. You can deal 380 damage if you used the max duration. You heard that right, right? So I had to be more scared and I just wasn't. So I die there. However, I kind of learned my lesson for the rest of the lane. I want to show you guys how this plays out. So at this point, I kind of wisen up. I see the void farming the large camp here. Uh, once again, I shouldn't auto attack these creeps at all. I actually think it's really bad that I have the habit of just like pushing the wave. I, I shouldn't push it at all. There's no reason to because my main objective is void can't jungle, right? I also can't really I jungle. OK, I, you actually jungle. OK, just because you hit like a truck. <laughs> um, but like here, I wave the wave, which is it, it's all cringe. Like all of this is cringe. Like Everything I do here should just be to get the lane back. Like once again, I could probably just pull this this like what I could do if I was super optimized is I could wave this when the time came because I was planning to farm it so I could get a neutral item, which is fine, but I should farm it while pulling it, right? So I could have waved it to pull it into this wave, right? Use wave of terror and that would have been great. But instead I didn't do that. And now things are a little cringe because I could die. I knew the bat was dead here. So at this point I'm, I'm comfortable pushing up because the bat's dead. So I am sort of adjusting and I, and I end up evading a gank, right? So my awareness got better over time. I was like, oh shoot, he could TP. Right, right when he was respawning, I'm like, he's gonna try to kill me. And I was right, right? Because he had lasso. So I didn't go for this. Oh, I'm so good. Oh my God, oh my God, I'm so good. So I, did, <laughs> I didn't go for this range creep, right? Because I knew he could TP, right? And he did TP. And now we get to kind of waste and make him waste his TP. And I can call out to my team, hey, bat TP bottom, right? Because there's no way he would get there fast enough. So I end up, I didn't know he was six. I, I scouted him there. I'm like, holy sh he's six i would die so fast if he, if he scouted me so like even here i was hesitant to hit this creep like realistically i should probably just go farm neutrals and i eventually did right i was like okay until i see the bat i saw him mid there so i'm like until i see bat i'm hitting i'm hitting the newts i'll literally farm ancients don't care and then this is why this is like vengeance major flaw like having to play like this is why this hero is like a bit of a sus offlaner if you have a venge and you're playing position four Honestly, a lot of the time you should just camp next to her and play the lane with her um, because otherwise they would have to know to do everything that I'm doing here. I'm not even doing it perfect, as you can see. Right? I could have done a lot to keep the lane even further back, like literally under my tower, which would have been fine. Right? I would be happy to just have perfect normal CS. But yeah, at this point, I'm just pushing the lane jungling. I mean, this is the laning stage is over and I don't want to watch the rest of this game. I end this game 0, zero I think 0, zero, three, zero three, eight. No kills, 
Three deaths, eight assists. I like speed, why? Wow, you're the most AFK and useless player of all time. You know what? You'd be wrong. I'm ranked 160 in Europe. Literally on the rise, gonna win the next DI. But uh, all right, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you learned quite a bit from this video. I actually think um, my laning's my strong suit. It's like something I take uh, quite a bit of pride in and I've been continuing to improve on it, improve on it. And like, I've learned some things about the range heroes, which hopefully I've taught to you guys in today's video. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace. And that's all. But remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below and I'm out. Peace.